and you came here in, was it March when you arrived? Yeah, it was uh, the middle of March. So just at the end of winter, right? Yeah, end of the winter and beginning of spring. And you arrived just before planting time. So, I mean, you're stood in front of, uh, what's that, a John Deere? Uh, 9620. Yeah, so you get to run equipment like that here? Oh yeah, we did that. This is a disc for like soil preparation before the, the planting or the seeding time. You can use that to kill some weeds or to make the soil better for the seeds. Okay. And running like equipment like air seeders, 60 feet air seeders. Uh, I didn't run like a, a sprayer, but uh, I run like a, all equipment like rollers from 50 feet rollers. And now we are running combines that we are in harvest time right now. Okay. And um, what about? I understand you've been working with the drone as well some of the time here? Oh well, yeah, now now that we're in harvest time we're working with that because you know, we can make a lot of nice pictures and videos of the harvest time, the combines and the grain cart and pictures of the farm too here is very nice to see all these beans and all the equipment around here. Okay, but are you using the drone for like mapping crops and checking for problems in the crops we can we can do that like uh, but uh, the drone just got here like uh, one month ago three weeks ago so when the time he got here the crops are already almost ready to combine and we couldn't see a lot of problems in that by the drone but we can use that too okay and now you've been to some seminars up in Minot or somewhere with um, NDSU right in you, you mean the North Dakota State University? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been there in a few days. Uh -huh. Talking about the crops and some problems like weeds and some problems like fungals. So, in terms of the crop production here, are you getting the chance to understand the problems they face, the pests, diseases, things like fertilizer requirements, etc.? Yeah, we can face that every day because I think the biggest problem here is the soil and the weeds. It's not the best soil in the world. Uh, and we got a lot of weeds that are very resistant to the herbicides. So I think that is the biggest problem here. That's what gets the yield yield a little bit lower. Okay. So do you know what yield you've been getting on the wheat that you harvested? On the wheat now we are getting like an average 57, 55 bushels per acre. But some good fields we are getting more than 60, like 65 or almost 70. And do you know how that compares to Brazil? Well, we don't have a lot of wheat in Brazil, but uh, if we had, I think it would be lower than here because we got no good weather for that. Uh -huh. But we can here co compare the soybeans around here. This is not the perfect area for soybeans, in my opinion. So they don't have like a really big and good yield around here, something, something like, like 40 and 45 bushels per acre. But in Brazil, we have a little bit more than this, like 50, 55 in average. Okay. Now, this, you said this is a big farm. I mean, you've got the tractor behind you. How many of these big four-wheel drive tractors does Lynn have? Oh, we have three of them. We have one more 9620, and we got uh, another big one, 9570, that's it's already on an air seeder, seeding barley and cover crops. And, yeah, this is the the bigger tractors we got here. Uh -huh. And uh, how many combines are you running? We are running three combines, two brand new. I think it's like uh, 780, two brand new, and one 680 from the last year model. And we got, uh, in a couple of weeks, there are more three combines coming for the custom harvest to help us. Are you going to have a custom harvest to come to help you? Yeah, yeah, when the canola and the durum would be like uh, ready in the same time, so we need them. I see. So, Afonso, these are the combines um, that Lynn's got. You said he's got three of these, right? Yep. So this is a, what, John Deere S680? Yeah, this is a last year model. Uh -huh. This is what I'm, I am running. Uh -huh. And right beside here, that side, we got the brand new 780 okay. S series. Is there a lot of difference between the 680 and the 780? Uh, not not actually, like uh, some difference in the system, operation, operation system, like inside the GPS and the calibration of everything. 
but it's pretty the same engine, same separator, same. It's about the same machine, I would say, like, but di different in the system. I see. So they've up a new version of the Green Star, basically. Yeah, just like that. Okay. And how wide is that header on there? On the front of the combine? Oh, it's 40 feet headers. It's a fixed one. It's not flexible. Uh -huh. Here we got the reel mm -hmm. to take help to pull the crops. And they're draper headers, right? Yeah, we got draper header. We got uh, belts right here to help, and one auger. I see. And now you come from Brazil, and I know you've operated some equipment there. But um, would you get the chance to operate something like this back in Brazil? Well, I don't think so. We got some equipment there, and some of the farms can have like a good and big equipment. But not like this, not like John Deere's brand new and this big size of equipment. I never saw that in Brazil. Yeah. So, and these have all got, like, you're using auto steer on them and everything in the field, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, now, you, you had some experience operating equipment in Brazil before you came, right? I had some of them. Yeah. And it's important... It's important that the uh, that you know how to drive a tractor and the basics of operating farm equipment before you come to the U.S., isn't it? I would say so because you no, know, it's different equipment, it's different tractors, different combines. But if you don't have like no experience, it's hard. You can like uh, make a real big problem. You can hurt yourself or hurt someone else because it's real big equipment. But if you know how to drive the old ones that we got in Brazil, this is easy. <laughs> okay. And farmers like Lynn, they're not frightened to give you a chance, are they? No. You know, you have to make, uh, make them comfortable with you. You have to make, you win their conf confidence, you know, their trust. Mm -hmm. But uh, after you get that, it's just like easy. Okay. If he trusts you, he trusts you to make everything. Yeah. And... Lynn organizes housing for you as well, right? Yeah. Somewhere to stay and a vehicle? Yep. I got a house for myself, I live alone, and I got a vehicle for myself too. Okay, so you can go to different places? Yeah, I can travel, go to different places, get my groceries and meet some friends. That's very good. Mm -hmm. So where have you been traveling in the U.S. since you've been here? Well, to start, uh, we've been traveling to cities like around here, like Minot, uh, Bismarck, Grand Forks, and Fargo here in North Dakota, uh, Devil's Lake, Newtown. But uh, for big trips, we've been to South Dakota, to Mount Rushmore and Custer Park, that parks around there. I've been to New York with my parents, they came here. And in a couple of months, we're coming to Orlando, Florida, too. Okay, so you're going to see quite a lot of the U.S. Oh, yeah, I will. Different things while you're here. Yeah, I'm planning to go to Vegas, too, and to visit uh, Grand Canyon, uh, maybe Yellowstone Park, too. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, when you came in March, it was probably pretty cold, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was pretty cold. Yeah? What temperature was it in March when you first arrived? Well, in Fahrenheit, it's like uh, 25 Fahrenheit. I don't know how is that in... So that Celsius. Would be, oh, that's about minus three Celsius. Oh, it's less than that, I think. Yeah. I got like minus, minus 25 of Celsius. So that's cold. Yeah, that's pretty cold. <laughs> it was like it was, it was the end of the winter, you know, we got some more three or four weeks of really cold and then it started warm up and that was pretty nice. Good. 